Hello all and welcome to this and this is because we have a lot to talk about. Yes, today, well I guess yesterday by the time most of you see this, there was lots of wrestling. There was a New Japan show which uh, was early, which did not get uploaded to New Japan because it was... I did it as a, as a traditional iPay-per-view and not on the New Japan World... Uh, not on New Japan World Live, but then they uploaded it later on New Japan World, and so that's how I watched it. Um, you had a Noah show, which has not dropped, and um, I don't think it's aired anywhere yet, where the tag titles got changed, and was said to be an excellent tag match between uh, the Australians and uh, the Killer Elite Squad. Then, of course, you had the New Japan, um, which I already talked about, show. You had NXT, which most of you probably have already seen, and why most of you are probably watching this video. And then, of course, we also had Lucha Underground, which probably most of you forgot, which I did end up watching. Um, my plan when I got home today was to watch uh, the NXT show, uh, Lucha Underground, and then if I had time, I figured I'd watch uh, the New Japan show. Now, uh, when I got home, um, by, by the time I got where I was able to finally watch stuff, um, NXT was probably about 45 minutes in the NXT, and uh, for some weird reason, I wasn't able to do the watch from the beginning option. It just kept going, and I didn't really want to do that, so I decided I'd just wait, and so I and uh, decided I'd just go ahead and watch um, the New Japan show instead. So that's what I watched first. Um, the New Japan show was from Osaka. Uh, it was the first of the New Beginning shows. Uh, where basically they take what probably should be one show and they divide it up into two shows. It worked out pretty well for them last year as far as attendance and money-wise went, so they went ahead and did it again this year. And um, the, the bad part of the shows are the fact that um, you get some like random six-man and you get some tag matches that are just kind of there. Um, uh, but you also get some really good stuff, like uh, the main event for the next one, um, which I believe is either Saturday or Sunday, is going to be um, Nakamura taking on uh, Yuji Nagata, and um, and then the co-main event is Ishii taking on Makabe, uh, rematch from their uh, Wrestle Kingdom show. Um, from Wrestle Kingdom. Um, not a lot of new beginnings on this stuff. A lot of rematches and that sort of thing. So there was that. But anyways, um, this show, and we'll start with this and then we'll go on to NXT. Um, this show was, I would say, was great by most people's standards. Um, for New Japan standards, it was just kind of okay. Um, I started out with Sho Tanaka taking on Kamatsu um, for the five billionth time. But uh, they did seem to actually kind of give these guys more than what they normally do. And the match was actually pretty good. Um, I do hope that if these guys come to the United States or leave New Japan and take it through world tour, that they do go to ROH and ROH does use them. That might be asking a lot, but I do hope that's the case. So there we go there. Uh, then we had Masuka Dorada and Tiger Mask taking out to New Japan and Nakanishi. This was not very good. And, um, you know, not very good at all, really. Um, then we had Chase Owens and Rob Conway taking on Tenzon and Jushin Liger. This is to set up for the next show where I where it be Chase Owens taking on Jushin Thunder Liger for the junior, uh, NWA Junior Heavyweight Championship and Rob Conway taking on Tenzon for the NWA Championship. Um, this was okay. Um, it started off not so great and then, um, the ending sequence was pretty good, so there was that. Then we had Kota Ibushi taking on Hanma. This was excellent. Um, I really liked this. This was one of those matches where you just get to see how great Han Hanma is and how much the crowd absolutely loves Hanma because he was in there with Ibushi and he was getting cheered over Ibushi in some cases. Um, when this if when this guy finally wins a big match, not just gets you know a random pinfall, you know a pin and a tag match, but actually wins a big match. Crowd is going to go ape shit. Um, just, just you can just tell. Uh, then we had the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Title Match. This to me should this or the Ibushi and Hama match should have been in the second half of the show um, and replaced one of the six men that were in the upper card uh, because this was this was great. This was probably this was my match. This for this card, this was the match of the card. Um, really good stuff. 
Uh, the Young Bucks taking on the Red Dragon, taking on Time Splitters. You know, most of you know that's going to be pretty great. Uh, the Young Bucks did win. I'm am curious if this is going to set up a title for title match in New Japan or in um, ROH, um, in Vegas. So we'll see. Yeah, that might not be the case, but I guess we'll see. Um, then we had Kenny Omega taking on Taguchi. Um, did not care for this. The probably the the last bit was really really excellent, but getting to that point really sucked. Um, so yeah, not not as great as is you know just just no. Uh, then we had uh, Chaos Partners of Okada and Yano teaming up with Sakuraba, which was completely random, taking on the Bullet Club of Bad Luck Fale, which who is kind of feuding with Okada, unfortunately. Um, Tommy Tonga and Yujiro. Um, this was okay only because of Okada being awesome. Um, the rest of it was not very good at all. Um, no. Then we had uh, Kojima and Naito and Nagata taking on Nakamura, Ishii, and Yoshihashi. This was really good. Um, I like this was this was a really fun little tag match. Uh, one of my favorite parts was Kojima and uh, Ishii in there, kind of doing a little mini match, and really made me want to see kind of a Kojima and Ishii kind of little feud after we get done with the Ishii and um, uh, da, 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 and Makabe stuff. So there was that. Um, then we had uh, the Bullet Club, uh, Doc Gallows and Ken a and Ken Carl uh, Ken Anderson. Listen to me, it's not Ken, it's Carl. Carl Anderson taking on Goto and Shibata. This was really good. Um, this is this is you know this at Russell Kingdom and in this show as well. We finally got to see um, the, uh, Gallows and Anderson really be what everyone thought. I still don't think they're nearly as good as Killer Elite Squad. But um, they were much better here. And Goto and Shibata were, you know, Goto and Shibata. It was a really good tag match. Um, really, really good. Almost great. Um, though Gallows and Anderson did go over the finishing sequence. On that is just utterly just mind, just, just insane. Um, but like I said, Gallows and Anderson went over, which seems completely odd. Um, I kind of get it. They're trying to get all of the uh, titles back on Bullet Club, but still, it was just not, 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 not my thing um, as far as that. But the match itself was really, really good. Um, then we had <coughs> AJ Styles and um, Tanahashi which everyone was really excited about because it's AJ Styles and Tanahashi for the IWGP title. Most people figured AJ would win here, and he did. Um, unfortunately, Tanahashi uh, took, did a dive to the outside and uh, bumped his head and was cut, and it kind of threw the match off, it seemed, a little bit. This was kind of a slower type of match than what you normally see in a uh, New Japan uh, main event or a title match. But it still worked. It was still a great match. It just wasn't as great as everyone had hoped, and so it was very disappointing. But it was still great, it's, you know. But that's what happens with New Japan. Show itself was great, but if, again, a great New Japan show feels okay because it's New Japan and the scale is so fucked up. It's not even funny. But um, show was enjoyable. I, I would recommend watching most of it, even even you know. Um, there's I mean, really, the only really bad stuff was uh, the two tag matches at the start of the show and uh, Omega and Taguchi, and then the uh, Bullet Club Six Man was really the only, you know, real. I would, everything else was 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 enjoyable to great. So there was that. So then we had after that we had um, uh, well. I guess what I uh, know. I guess um, after that, I watched uh, Lucha Underground, which this was the kind of uh, Alberto what El, El Patron um, debut. Really debuted last week at at the end, but this was him kind of throughout the show, and they kind of talked about him throughout the show. And it was really awesome. Um, he he is the first guy that I can think of that actually asked about the key um, that Corto has and why he has it. 
so or, or at least what it was. He wanted to know what it was, it, what it unlocked. Um, so he showed up. Um, there was that. Um, you had an awesome uh, opening match with um, Phoenix, and um, I can't think of the other guy's name. Um, he looks like uh, well, I can't think of the other. I can't think of the other guy's name. The Mystic. He looks like Mystico, but he's not Mystico, and he's not even he's not even Sincara Mystico in AAA. I can't think of the guy's name. But um, this was really fun and a really just wow kind of fun, great little lucha match. Um, so you had that, then you um, this all led to Phoenix winning, and then Katrina from uh, Mel Martas coming out and uh, kind of siding with him, which was kind of weird. And then they went back, and Mel was back there, and he confronted Katrina. And we finally heard him talk, so there was that. Um, it was really, really good kind of video package, just really good stuff. And then we got a video package with uh, Big Rick, um, with basically the return of Big Rick is coming, and he's seeking vengeance, which was also really awesome. The the video packages and and which and which underground insane um and when the watches then we had uh, son of havoc taking on johnny mundo which was also a really fun they gave him time let him go out there and kind of do their thing so there was that and then we finally got um then we got a uh, pentagon junior match which led to you know him winning um and basically uh asking his master if he had you know, he basically had sacrificed this guy to his master, whoever his master is, we don't know. Um, more, you know, those subtle storyline things that will probably keep going. And then um, we had El Patron come out. Um, the crowd for this was really hot. I think this is probably the first kind of really hardcore crowd that they got. I, I, you can kind of sense it, but this was the first really hot crowd, I would say. They had. This crowd was insane hot. When he came out, they went nuts for him, and um, he cut an awesome promo, um, just really good stuff, and um, kind of shows what a guy can do when he's not scripted, um, just really good stuff, and um, after that, Tejano came out and attacked him, Who he, that's who he beat for the AAA championship, which was good, because that's a guy that most people don't know who it is, and so you're able to debut a guy that most people knew who it was, with a guy that you know did know what it was because they're feuding over the AAA belt, which uh, Alberto has, and so I thought that was really well done too. I thought it was a really good episode. That from you know I was very skeptical of this show, and when I started watching it, um, uh, it was just kind of it was good, and I, there was parts of it I liked, but it was eh. And then I will say from the episode that had the Aztec Warfare match on, this show has been awesome. Absolutely awesome. If you haven't been watching this show, you need to take the time and watch this show. Um, then we had NXT Revival. Or Revival. Rival. I keep wanting to call it Revival. It's not Revival. It's Rival. Um, which was pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, started with uh, Hideo Itomi taking on Tyler Breeze. This was good. Um, was really not long enough to be anything more than good, but it was good. Um, and uh, got Hideo um, really kind of let him show off, and he finally, finally looked like Kenta. Finally, if you kind of know what I mean, and, and kind of that was good. Then we had a Bull Dempsey taking on Baron Corbin um, in a no DQ match. This wasn't very good. Um, I kind of like Bull Dempsey more. But I, I, he definitely doesn't have the look I think WWE would like, even though I think he's kind of, you know, he's in developmental and he's a big guy. But I think, you know, he has that old school brawler look that they're not really big for. I think maybe Triple H likes those guys, but, I, you know, I mean, he just doesn't have the body for it. Where Corbin does, though Corbin is so just stiff in the ring. I don't mean like stiff like how he wrestles. He's like mobile stiff. He just, he just not very, he's very clunky. And um, so this wasn't very good. Then we had uh, Blake and Murphy taking on Sankara and Callisto, the Lucha Dragons for the tag titles rematch. This was pretty good. Um, nothing really to write home about. Um, really wasn't long enough again to, to be um, all of that. But it was it was enjoyable um, with uh, Blake and Murphy going over. So there was that. Um, then we had Adrian Neville versus Finn Balor. This was awesome. 
Um, this was really, really awesome, and um, I really enjoyed it. Kind of started off kind of slow, uh, but once they got to the end, it was awesome. So there was that. Then we had the four-way, um, and a lot of people thought this would be the show where they would finally maybe cut the women's time a little bit because this show was pretty full, and it was Charlotte versus Bailey versus Charlotte. Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch for the women's title in a four-way. This was fucking awesome. Um, just, it's my favorite sh match on the show. Um, I know some people probably like the main event a little better. Probably some people like Neville and, and Balor better. I like this the best myself. It was action all the way through. Told a really good story. And any really, I, Charlotte losing clean kind of surprised me. I, I shouldn't say I didn't think it was bad. But losing clean really kind of surprised me. Um, but it was really good. I mean, S Sasha Banks is well deserves the title, so there's no problem with that. And um, just awesome. They were doing dives and all sorts of stuff, and just, just, just awesome, awesome stuff. And then you had Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens for the uh, for the title, and um, this this told a, a really good story. I, I didn't enjoy it as much because I. I it, it was unlike, this was a lot like Brock versus uh, Cena at SummerSlam, where Owens pretty much dominated. The thing is, is that with Brock versus Cena, you never see that with Cena. And not that you've really seen that with Sami Zayn, but it's not like Sami Zayn is uh, the super duper hero that's been built up for, you know, 12 years, and you've never seen anything like this, and then it happens, and then it's awesome. This wasn't quite that. Um, you had a basically a ref stoppage because of Kevin Owens trying to knock out Kevin Sami Zayn and uh, the trainers and the ref stopping it. And really, it was the trainers part of it and, and kind of the the way the uh, ref reacted and how they stopped it and all that stuff. It really took, kind of took me out of the match. I thought that probably went a little too long. I thought it should have just been, you know, the the they came over. And um, all of this. But they hit a lot of good stuff. They teased a lot of stuff that when they feuded on the indies, they did a lot that they didn't do here. Um, so there was that. Of course, uh, Kevin Owens won, which was very surprising to me. But um, I guess it makes sense. Um, but still, it was it was a great match. Um, just, I don't, it just felt kind of underwhelming to me because of the way they booked it. Not that it was bad, because I, I think it, it sets up. Uh, better stuff down the road, but it just was just kind of there. But, um, but yeah, just another awesome NXT show. Um, it was probably, you know, I mean, for, for two hours, this was pretty amazing. Um, just really enjoyed it. And, um, and yeah, so just an awesome day of wrestling. And like I said, there's a Noah show out there that nobody probably has seen yet that apparently was pretty good. So, um, yeah, there was that too. Uh, and the Noah stuff. If you haven't seen any of the Noah stuff, I, I'd recommend it. Um, the the influx of Suzuki Gun really has made a difference, and um, you know you can just it's just really just kind of just cool to see some new matchups and that sort of thing. So there you go. So that's pretty much it. Um, just awesome day of wrestling. Can't can't ask for much more than that. Really can't. So anyways, with that, I'm out. Um, like I said, a lot of people probably forgot about Lucha Underground. Lucha Underground. I'm a believer in Lucha Underground. I actually really like it. I like even the cheesy video packages and the wacky storyline with the key and Matanza and, you know, people, you know, all of that sort of stuff. I, I find that stuff really kind of cool and, and something different. And, um, yeah, so anyways, with that. I'm out. Have a good one.